just released his budget for uh, fiscal year 2023 and includes significant tax hikes on individuals and business, the largest of which would increase the corporate tax rate from 21% to 28%. You all know, the entire country knows, that I am opposed to raising the corporate income tax. And so that was true yesterday. It's true today. No new taxes on corporations. Yes. Now you might wonder, wait, why are people cheering for that? She's a Democratic senator who is steadfastly opposed to even just going back to, like, not even the whole level of corporate taxation that we had under Obama. This wouldn't take us back to 35%. They're talking about 28%. Why is this horrible position getting her an ovation? Well, it's because she was speaking at the Arizona Chamber of Commerce this week. Those are her constituents, those are the people cheering for her. But if this sort of thing, these stunts, these positions, the lack of democratic accountability by Kirsten Cinema, if that has been frustrating you, well, I've got some good news. Representative Ruben Gallego, who is the rumored front runner to potentially go up against Kirsten Sinema in a Democratic primary, has broken his personal fundraising records in the first quarter of 2022. And that's way before the primary. That's just because people believe that he might go up against her. He's raising more money than ever before. He had a record fundraising quarter. And that's amidst, obviously, a lot of criticism of Kirsten Sinema by you know outlets like ours. He raised $512,740 for his house race in the first three months of the year, almost four times more than his haul in the first quarter of 2020. And so, you know, that of course is in advance of an election. He's doing way better just on the belief that he might go up against her. Now, I've got a lot of other amazing data, very good news. If you want to see Kirsten Cinema get booted from the Congress, but Yaz, I want to give you a chance to jump in. What do you think about this potential challenge? Well, I like it. It's good. I think it's indicative of the fact that the people of Arizona were duped, just like the people of West Virginia were duped. They thought they were getting one thing, they got something literally the opposite of what they wanted, what they asked for. But I did think it was funny in that clip that you just showed that the slow clap was started by the guy who was interviewing her, by the host himself. <laughs> like you're not supposed to start the slow clap yourself, you know, but he was the first one to start clapping and then everybody else joined in. I just thought that was funny. Yeah, that's a little cringy. I guess you'll you'll take your claps where you can get them or whatever. But <laughs> yeah, you'll notice like she's not. It's not like her constituents that are cheering for her. That would require them to actually be able to get into a room with her or to know where she's gonna be. We're yeah, way she, past. Yeah, she doesn't, that. does she's she? Right? She doesn't. She hasn't talked to her constituents anymore. No, she or runs her, from her donors. Them. Yeah, they they stopped talking and to her. She should because they don't like her. So I'm gonna show you some of my favorite polls that I have ever seen. Arizona Democratic primary voters, what do they think about cinema? They don't like her. She is net negative 57 in the last big data for progress poll. And by the way, like it it's not like Democratic primary voters love other Democrats, but they especially despise her. Joe Biden was at plus 62. Joe Biden, who this is like a year into his presidency when this poll was done. People have a lot of issues with him. The other senator, Mark Kelly, was at plus 59. This isn't just the normal thing where we're very critical of our politicians. This is a unique thing, and it gives me so much life that people finally have seen who one of these politicians is. And so I want to jump ahead. We're going to skip the next text graphic. Heads up to the director. Let's go to this. Do you have a favorable or unfavorable opinion of Kirsten Cinema poll? This is done over time. And I love every bit of this. So she had been largely favored, 60 to 70% approval amongst registered voters back pre her her stance in support of the filibuster and her incredibly condescending thumbs down of the minimum wage. You see her immediately tank as a result of that, jumps down a bunch, and then gradually starts going on again. When she skipped the January 6th commission vote, immediate fall there. And it has only been downhill from there. And I could not love this more that people saw specific things she did. She wanted to send a message and apparently she did. Message received by the voters. This is exactly what American politics should look like. What do you think? Uh, What did she think was going to happen, right? I mean, a lot of these people, Whenever they're elected to their first term, they'll say whatever it takes to get them elected. But then in their first term, they do have to kind of um, 
stick to that a little bit, right? If they're wanting to get reelected, they don't want to lose those voters that voted for them in the first place, but she doesn't seem to care. I guess the money's coming in, so she's not worried about it. Maybe she's not planning on running for a second term or she's not planning on being elected to a second term and she's not worried about that either. Either way, yeah, I mean, I don't know what what else was going to happen. If you ran on one platform, then you do the exact opposite. People aren't going to approve of what you're doing in office. Exactly. Or maybe she was just thinking that people aren't paying close enough attention. But her antics are so ridiculous that she's getting national attention. So the people of Arizona, surely they know, they know what's going on. Exactly, yeah. Yeah, well look, she she knew who her voters were when she was trying to get elected. Like she knew oh, yeah. to pretend yeah. to be progressive, she knew that. And no, they, they actually are and they actually pay attention and they are not going to stand for this. They know that the state deserves and can have better representation and, and maybe we'll have that. Uh, Representative Ruben Gallego as of right now, is it plus 49 amongst voters uh, plus seven points from when they pulled back in October of last year. So, and by the way, his um, uh, unknown figure went down by seven. So it appears that as more of the voters there find out about him, especially as an alternative to Kirsten Cinema, uh, his vote share has gone up. You talked about how she might not want to run again. I think that that's an uh, certainly a possibility. Well, let's send her running. Like if Ruben goes for another year raising a ton of money, and by the way, if, if other people want to throw their hats in the ring, I feel free, have at it. I want that to be a contested primary, but the more money, the more attention goes into not whether she might be primaried, but who is gonna go up against her, then maybe that makes her like take a look out there and say, I was always just gonna end up ditching the voters for a seat on a corporate board. Maybe I'll do it sooner rather than later. And it would be pretty soon, because she's up for reelection, not in this cycle, but in the next one. So if this primary is gonna come, it's gonna start within about a year at this point. Yeah, I mean, that that's definitely one to watch, not just for the people of Arizona, but nationally. She and Manchin together, they, they've stifled so many different bills that have tried to get through things that would actually help their constituents, both in West Virginia and in Arizona. So everybody's watching these races, everyone's watching these congressional seats, and people are donating even if they don't live in those states. So both of those yeah. senators should keep an eye on that. Exactly, I'm gonna send you out with one more bit of good news. This last poll, Cinema has apparently a current ceiling of 17% against possible Democratic primary challengers. So she's at 16% against Ruben Gallego, against Regina Romero, she's at 17%. They despise her. And oh, when we finally get to the primary, if it happens, I am gonna enjoy covering that so much week after week, month after month. I hope you'll join us. Check out the Damage Report podcast each day, wherever you get your podcasts, whether Pocket Casts or Stitcher or iTunes. You can join me as I give you the news and stories you want with a range of co-hosts and interview guests jumping in on the fun each day. Again, that's the Damage Report, wherever you get your podcasts. And if you get them at iTunes, don't forget to rate and review. Sometimes I'll read them live on the show.